All right, guys, welcome out to the shop today. Changing a few things up here. Um, you can see that I got some hand planes on the shelves right here, and I got saws underneath here. These saws I don't seem to ever really use. Um, a couple of them I want to keep, like some of the smaller ones, uh, but a lot of these bigger ones, I don't think I use one of them out of all the ones that are in here. Uh, a couple of these, like this one right here, some of these on the end I'll probably keep. And then I have a user one right here that I like. I'll probably go through these and pick out a couple, see that uh, I like them or not. But one thing that I want to do is get rid of this uh, system down here with the saws. And I've got so many hand planes that I, I need to I need to get all these all in this area. It's really annoying me that I can't find them when I need them or trying to move the hand planes around. I wanna go ahead and clear out this area, get these saws taken care of. I got some shelving stuff that I wanna go ahead and put in here instead of just that big open area. The place is a mess and I hate that. So I got this one right here. This was the first ever hand saw I ever got. It's just a uh, Craftsman and it does all right for <clears throat> cutting tree limbs. And I got these three right here <clears throat> i'd probably give to my boys so i want to keep those and then i got this one i like it because it cuts good and i repaired the horn on it and i think it looks pretty nice then we got this one that i never restored it's a little smaller one it's a warranted so i'll probably get rid of this one this one's all cracked up on the handle I don't, i'm not gonna waste my time for distant number seven i like these uh they're they're very nice they cut well but I think I'm gonna end up getting rid of that one. Cause I think I have another Distin number seven. Here's the other one. These aren't really even new or anything like that. They got good etches on them. Here's an older one as well. I like the recessed medallion. Lots of life left. This one is a split nut saw. So that one I'll be keeping. You guys can see how good that etch is. But the etch only goes right here. There's supposed to be something down here too. So I may sell that one. It does not have any use. This one I restored a while ago. Cleaned up all the medallion and all the hardware. There is no etch. There was a lot of pitting on here though. You guys can see how pitted that is. But it cuts good. Sharpened it up. I've used it quite a bit. I don't even know who's, what saw this is. A distant porter something maybe. I don't know. This is a, a keyhole saw though, I believe. So, probably just keep that as it's an odd one. So, pretty much only got six or seven saws that I'm gonna get rid of. So I got a 10 foot piece of lumber and I need to cut them at 28 inches. All right guys, so doing the uh, calculations, uh, I got 121 inches and if I cut them at 28 inches a piece, it looks like we're gonna get about four shelves out of this. So I found one of my 11 tooth hand saws and we're just gonna see how it cuts compared to the other ones. I don't think I sharpened this one yet. This one looks like I haven't done anything to it. It looks pretty fresh, like a, uh, like no restoration whatsoever. So we'll just go ahead and we'll see what it looks like. Of this would just get knocked off so even with it being 
unrestored, unsharpened. It looks a little bit cleaner than some of the other stuff that I just cut between the 810 and 11 tooth. This is the one that we're gonna use and you can see that there's, it's a lot cleaner than what I first started out with. So there's the difference between those two, 11 tooth and an eight tooth. All right, so this bottom board, which is on here, I gotta get out of here and it's just screwed in from the side whenever I did it. So we'll just pop those out just like that. This board comes out. And so the way that I'm gonna be installing the new boards for the shelving is just with some of these pegs. So we're gonna go through and see what we can use, what we can match up so that we got even shelves, stuff like that, and see what we gotta to modify to get this to work. So there's one. That's a little big. Well, that's not a big deal. All right, so I can't use the the pins. I've got only two and nothing else will fit. So what I'll go ahead and do is do the same that I did for this shelf. And I'll just create these little runners and I attach those from the outside as well. And then I will just use that one board that we took off the bottom. I'll rip it right in half. That'll be whatever this is. And then I'll be able to just get um, my shelves and screw them in. From the side, I think I gotta pull it out, I guess, to get anything on that side, but it is what it is, and we'll we'll just make it work. So my shelving I got here, I got whatever gap this is, it's off of whatever this is put in here and it's on some studs already. I can't go up any higher with it. I mean, I could drill some holes higher, but I mean, this is a good space. I made this shelf just tall enough for all of these hand planes and these are all at six and a quarter inches from here to here. And so I've measured down six and a quarter here plus the three quarters of an inch for the plywood or for the wood I'm using. And then it looks like I'm only gonna be able to get three shelves in here. All right, so as you can see, I put in all of the side blocks. And so I've got room for four shelves. And the reason why I did that is because when I got down to the very bottom, I measured and I still had just over six inches. So I was like, forget about it. We'll go ahead, put a shelf down there and we'll see what it looks like. So I think there was gonna be plenty of room. We're gonna add these little shelves in real quick. So we got all the shelves are put in there now. I'm not staining it or doing anything fancy with it. Maybe for like a, a winter project, if I get even more hand planes this year, maybe I'll go ahead and actually build like an actual, like a bookcase type of deal. But I'm really happy with the spacing on the shelving at least. Six and a quarter inches from the top to the bottom of it, it gives it enough space for all the hand planes to go in. So what I need to do now is go get all my molding planes and go ahead and start putting them in the shelving areas. See what it all looks like.
All right, so as you guys saw, I had to pull all those, the little supports out, and then I had to reinstall them. And the main thing that I ran into was I have apparently a couple taller molding planes, and this wouldn't fit into this hole right here. I just never have had it up in the top, so I didn't know. But uh, pretty much I went from six and a quarter inches in between to seven inches. Yeah, to seven inches in between each shelf. And then this bit, this bottom one is just a lot bigger. It's nine inches in there. I guess in case I have any really huge ones. But now I can go ahead and start getting the, uh, the molding planes organized and set up the way I want them. All right guys, well, I got the hand plane shelves all finished up and there's a great selection of planes, even a lot of extra room right there, there, there's some there, there, and there. Um, not really organized yet. Um, as you can see, I've got some hollows and rounds mixed up in here and there's also, oops, sorry, and there's also some down in here. But uh, it's a great mixture of just different planes and some still need to be fixed. Uh, this one needs some boxing in on there. Um, just different odd and end mixtures. Some complex molding planes right here, but then there's some in other spots. We've got the beading planes right up there. You guys can see I need some boxing in those. Uh, but I believe they all have irons and I have one um, plane that needs a wedge right now so just some things that need to be fixed up they're kind of dusty right now been working on that model a a lot lately and these haven't gotten much touching on them so they're getting a little bit dusty but that's it i'm glad that that's over and i have all my hand planes in one spot so now i need to figure out something to do with all these hand saws i'm probably gonna sell quite a few of them and try to get that bit of collection down um, not too much into the hand saws like i am the hand planes so no need no reason to really get overwhelmed with those so thank you guys for watching this quick little video i mean it's not uh anything really too hard nothing in depth um i was kind of disappointed that i wasn't able to get that fourth shelf in there but as you can see i think that the spacing with the seven inches in between each shelf works out best uh, six and a quarter was a little bit tight and it didn't allow at least just that one hand plane in there So I had to rethink everything had to pull everything back off. I mean it is what it is So I did have hand planes sitting over here on the parts washer and on my router table So those are all cleaned off now and uh, I can actually start using those again